Hey YouTube, it's me Nate Lovelady. So I just finished the program on Netflix. I have to say it was really good. Um, I'm a survivor of the Academy at Ivy Ridge. I was there in 03 through Christmas. It was the most horrible time of my entire life. It, it, the trauma, the PTSD, the shit I saw, it was terrible. Um, so I guess I'll go over, I'll tell you guys my story a bit, and then, um, you know, one thing I wanted to touch on that the documentary didn't fully touch on was is how barbaric and chaotic and crazy things would get on the boys' side of the facility. Um, you know, times upper levels would organize gladiator-style wrestling matches, you know, between families, and the winner, you know, I you'd get some type of privilege. It, it wouldn't be much at all. Uh, sometimes you'd win a new pen because uh, spinning pens was a thing that you could do to, I guess, occupy your mind or, you know, little things like that you would win. Um, you know, I wanted to touch on some of those things that I didn't feel the documentary really got an opportunity to touch on. Um, you know, I... One thing that was very, very much done and was really out in the open on the boy's side is uh, certain students' mental illnesses were exploited and uh, they they just absolutely abused and punished those kids to no fucking end, man. Um, I'm not going to name any names, but, you know, there was one kid in particular tall, pale, red-headed kid. Uh, if you were there in the time span I was, you know exactly who I'm talking about. And they just, they fucking abused this kid. They, they absolutely drugged this kid through the mud, through the coals, through the broken glass, you name it. The fact that this kid could open his eyes in the morning and not want to fucking die was just a miracle. You know, he'd shit, his, shit and piss his pants. They would deny him bathroom, uh, bathroom privileges, bathroom trips. Um, he'd stay in worksheets. But the thing is, this wasn't a kid that belonged in any type of of uh, 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 any type of facility. This was a this was a child that belonged in some type of medium impact uh, mental health facility where he was going to get appropriate mental health um, treatment. And that didn't happen where we were. That did not happen. You might see a therapist once and they say, here, you're going to take these drugs. That's what happened to me. And, uh, you know, th th those were just a couple of the things that we really didn't see in the documentary. Um, A lot of the times, you know, the, the upper levels on the boys' side and, you know, may happen on the female side, I don't know, but we're very uh, uh, quick to assert their authority and vindictive and just, they act like you're, you know, act like you're, they're your friend, infiltrate your mind, manipulate you, get you to tell you. Get them to tell you a few of your secrets, and then boy, you're fucked. And then they're and then it all would get used against you. But um, you know they would open up all the windows. It'd be negative twenty degrees out in upstate New York, snowing, and they'd open up all the windows and they and they'd put fans on. They'd put these two box fans in the window, and we'd sit there and it'd just be absolutely freezing, and uh, for no reason whatsoever. I couldn't figure out why, you know. And everything you heard in the documentary was true. If you needed to fart, you ask permission to fart. If you really, it was the most simplest of things you asked permission to do, but then there were just things you just didn't ask permission to do because you just knew that you were fucked right from the get go. Don't even ask. Um, <sighs> One thing would be an example for me. Don't don't put your hand up and ask to go to the bathroom during something like uh, like uh, what do they call it? Class or if you're in worksheets, you know, 
forget about it. You'll go to the bathroom when everybody goes to the bathroom. That's it. Um, simple things. Don't ask for a new water bottle. Fuck you. You're not getting a water bottle. Not going to happen. You know, one of the things they didn't touch on that, that, you know, the, one of the money-making schemes that they used was, is so you, you, your parents, they paid all this money per month, right? Upwards, uh, God, what was it over $7,000 a month? And, uh, you would think you would get at least the head and shoulders. No, everything you got was do- like dollar store brand. So if you got shampoo, everything was suave. Um, if you got a razor, you got one Bic razor. If you got, um, what else? A water bottle. You got the cheapest water bottle they could buy. There were no perks. There were no luxuries. There was no nothing. They, 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 they smashed you into the ground, metaphorically, mentally, and and literally, quite literally. And uh, the goal was to get you to break. Um, so you know my story. I never did drugs. I didn't get in fights. I wasn't in gangs. I wasn't having sex. Um, let's be honest, as a 16-year-old kid, I was wishing I was having sex, but it wasn't happening. Um, for, for for the most part, you know, I was just your normal kind of kid. I loved playing sports. My problem was is I didn't like to go to school. I liked to skip school. And um, I had some underlying mental illness problems that just weren't addressed appropriately. And my mother, being a single mother and somebody who had her own problems and wasn't quite responsible herself and, you know, maybe abused, you know, abused alcohol, things like that, she kind of went into this mode partially, you know, and I've convinced myself, and I, I believe I'm right, that a, yes, she didn't want me. She didn't want to have to fucking deal with me. So what's the easiest way to convince yourself that you're helping somebody while helping yourself is getting rid of them? Um, you know, and she did that my whole, my whole life, really. I, I spent my whole teenage years bouncing back and forth between grandparents' houses, aunts and uncles, friends. So this this was really no different in my eyes. It's just she was getting loans and shit like that to keep me away. She was smart enough to come and get me, and that's a whole nother story that we can go into in another video if people actually receive this one and think it's okay. Let me know and we'll do another one. But you know, my my that's that's basically where I was coming from. I skipped school. I wasn't doing good in school. I had no motivation. I had no willpower as far as wanting to do what you were supposed to do. I just didn't want to fucking do it, man. I didn't want to fuck with school, none of that shit. So, one day, one morning, I woke up, and uh, I was being told, you got to get in this car, you're going away. I'm like, all right. And I had just thrown a fit because my mother had made it known that I was going away to this place and I got to see the videos and I was just thinking man maybe this isn't so bad look at this place you get to go on fucking boats swim it looks like you get to meet friends this looks like fucking summer camp this doesn't look terrible you know and uh from there I got in a car and we made the journey and I'll never forget man getting dropped off and that was it she was fucking that was it she was down the road gone and she had a male escort with her that was a friend of the family who was a piece of shit who kind of made sure things, I guess, didn't go go awry. Um, but they weren't going to. I wasn't going to take off running down the road in the middle of Canada because I didn't feel I had to. And within the first five minutes I was there and those doors closed, I knew I was in serious fucking shit, man. I knew... Just like the first the first episode of the documentary, the program, where the fuck am I? That's exactly what you say. I was wrestled to the ground by Dave McCabe during a haircut. 
uh, challenged me to a wrestling match, wrestled me to the ground, got me up after they shaved my head, I was covered in hair, put me in a sweatsuit, sent me down, that's where I met Colin, who was supposed to show you the ropes, it's the one person you can talk to, and you can only talk for three days, and it's pertaining to whatever it is the program says you need to do. So, I, uh, I learned the ropes, I guess, and apparently I wasn't very good at it. I never earned one point. I was always in the negative. I was always in worksheets. I had no motivation to do anything. And quite frankly, the place was breaking me. You know, I remember looking in the mirror and just seeing how gray I was. I could see like the veins in my face, like purple veins in my face. The best way I could describe it. My skin was pale. My lips were red. I was skinny. I was shaved bald. You know, I looked like I was out of a, a fucking concentration camp almost. It was terrible. I just remember looking at myself in the mirror that one particular day and being like, holy shit, man. Look at me. Where is my health gone? This is what's going, you know, what's going on? And I really, I should have known what was going on. We were being deprived of food. And we were being forced to do uh, excruciating physical um, exercises two, three times a day. Um, so from there, things got started. And uh, I was now a inmate at the Academy at Ivy Ridge. So this is part one. Part two will go into some of the things I, I saw, witnessed, happened to me. Some of the real raw, crazy ass shit that went on in this fucking place. If you're interested, like and let me know, you know, and we can do a part two and a part three and whatever anybody wants to see. So until then, guys, over and out. If any of the staff from that place see this. Fuck you. I hope you remember me. First thing I did when I left was I threw you all under the bus, you pieces of shit. Went right to the fucking police. So, you better believe it. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. It's been a long road. And I'm going to keep on keeping on. Over and out.